stop wasting time with these anti-procrastination tips. Chances are, if you've ever tried to get your procrastination and time management in order, you've likely failed. There are a number of reasons why, but the good news is that something can be done, even if it feels hopeless. Let's dive into three productivity boosting tips that can help you go from stress, guilty, and overwhelmed to getting started, making progress, and handing things in. So check this out. Tip number one is about something that I like to call launch sequences. But before I show you one of my own launch sequences, let me guide you through an analogy. Going to the gym. I swear sometimes I don't know what's harder, doing my actual workout or mustering up the energy to even go to the gym in the first place. So what do I do when I know I have to get my workout in, but I'm already in my cozy home clothes and would rather just binge watch the next three episodes of Lady Waterton of Kingshire? Well, First, I put on my workout top, then my workout leggings. Next, I grab my wireless earbuds and my workout bag. Finally, I grab my keys and I drive to the gym. Those tiny, small steps are enough for me to muster up the energy to get to the gym. And by the time I'm there, well, starting my workout is just a given. Can't really turn back when you're already there. This is the idea behind what I call a launch sequence. The idea is to overcome the inertia that you experience when you first start a task, which is typically the hardest part for many of us. By starting with small steps that then give us enough momentum to keep going with the rest of the task, we can push past that difficult transition of thinking about doing something to actually doing something. As a simplified analogy, one way I like to think about it is like an enzyme or a catalyst that helps to speed up a chemical reaction by reducing the activation energy, thus allowing for reactants to convert to products. We're not going to get into the nitty gritty of chemistry, but this is generally the idea behind a launch sequence. A launch sequence is a sequence of specific and well-known steps to initiate a task. For example, maybe if you're doing the laundry, that could look something like put laundry into basket, bring basket to washing machine, put detergent in washer. The launch sequence that I use when I'm updating my records looks something like this. Open Google Doc, click the appropriate sheet tab, fill in the date. That's it. Each step is intentionally quick, easy, and systematic. This makes those bigger, more challenging tasks easier to complete by helping you overcome the hurdle of getting started, especially when you have steps that are specific, systematic, and not at all overwhelming. Okay, so tip number two is about the Eisenhower matrix. Now the Eisenhower matrix is all about task prioritization, but first I'll share with you a little story about Dolores a bright student who unfortunately had a nasty habit of missing the big picture and also lacked prioritization skills. In the town of Kingshire, there lived an architecture student named Dolores, known for her meticulous attention to detail. One day, Dolores was called upon to design a new park. She wanted it to be perfect and obsessed over every small detail. So this posed two problems. First, in her refusal for anything below perfection, she felt utterly paralyzed for months not knowing where to start and thus unable to start the project. With the deadline looming, Dolores panicked and finally got to work, burning the midnight oil and was overcome with overwhelm as she rushed through her park design. Nonetheless, the park was finally unveiled, but this revealed the second problem. Amidst the flawlessly planned pathways and her perfectly positioned trees, Dolores realized her mistake. She had forgotten the main point of the park, to bring joy and unity to Kingshire's residents. What does this tell us? Had Dolores only balanced the details with her broader vision, and if she had a tool to help her prioritize her steps, she may have been able to start sooner and the new park may have been the talk of the town for all the right reasons. This is what tools like the Eisenhower Matrix can do for us. Help us ensure that we focus on what's most important, which can help us get started and be mindful of the big picture. So what is the Eisenhower Matrix? Well, you know that feeling you get when you're overwhelmed by the endless stream of tasks vying for your attention because everything is due tonight? The Eisenhower Matrix, also known as the Urgent Important Matrix, well, that was named after the 34th President of the United States, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Eisenhower was known for his exceptional ability to prioritize tasks, and the concept he developed is a simple yet effective way to do just that. It looks something like this. Depending on the urgency and importance, tasks are categorized into one of four quadrants. Now, there are lots of different variations and ways to organize this, so don't freak out. But for this video, quadrant one is for tasks that are important and urgent. For example, this could look like last minute cramming for an exam. 
Quadrant two is for things that are important but not urgent, like reviewing lecture notes. Quadrant three is for urgent but not important things, like some emails and some messages. And then there's quadrant four, which is for things that are not urgent and also not important. That might look like excessive mindless scrolling through social media. So now I want to take things a step further. The real gold here is how to use this tool to help you prioritize your tasks and thus better manage your time. Spending too much time in quadrants three and four causes time management problems. And what ends up happening as a symptom is then spending too much time on quadrant one. For good time management, the idea is to spend more time in quadrant two and cut down the time spent in quadrants three and four. Then focus the immediate attention that we have on whatever is in quadrant one. This means that we can allocate more time to actually important tasks before they pile up, become urgent and get overwhelming. When you have a clear understanding of what needs to be done and when, you'll find yourself better equipped to tackle tasks head on leading to increased productivity, a greater sense of accomplishment, and less temptation to procrastinate on important tasks. Future you will probably thank you too. So now I wanna share with you the North Star approach. Here's the truth of the matter. The first two tips you learned and really any strategies, tips, hacks, and tools aren't going to be nearly as effective if you don't do this setting a North Star goal, or in other words, knowing the why behind your actions by having a clear objective that has a clear direction and deadline. Check this out. If we turn to NASA, we can begin to understand what's so special about the North Star. Polaris, known as the North Star, sits more or less directly above Earth's North Pole along our planet's rotational axis. What's pretty cool is that the North Star stays roughly in the same place in the sky, making it a dependable reference point to find the direction of North. This makes it a reliable guide for orienting yourself and navigating your way in the Northern Hemisphere. This is the idea behind having a North Star goal or knowing your why. It guides you through the fog of distractions that often lead to procrastination, helping you say yes to the right things and no to what's not really going to help you. Sure, there may be some interesting shapes and activities in the distance or just off to the left, but your North Star keeps you zoned into where you need to go, where you want to go. So you know where to point your efforts and you can plan ahead. And yes, I know it might sound cheesy and obvious, but consider this, understanding your reasons for doing things helps you understand what's urgent and important. Essentially, the aim is to clarify your major goals and values. You want to get really clear on why you're doing something and why it's important to you. If your big reason why is to become a software engineer, astronaut, veterinarian, professor, or whatever your dream career is, maybe finishing that essay gets you one step closer to this. If your big reason, if your big why involves helping others, then maybe studying for that exam and reviewing your notes gives you the knowledge you need to serve those people that you want to serve effectively. And if you're wondering, okay, that all sounds good, but how do you do this? Well, a good step is a goal setting sheet that can help you define your goals. The thing is, if you know where you're going, you can plan your route. And even if you go astray, a quick glance at your North Star can help you find your way back. I hope you found these tips helpful if you did, but still want to learn more about how to set up a weekly schedule, a study schedule, for example, check out this video next. And as always, if you give this video a like, it lets me know what to make more of so I can keep making content that's hopefully helpful and fun to watch. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye.